Hey everybody, welcome back to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. Now, if you're not necessarily new around here, you might know that something different is going on. There's no Sean here, it's just me, Ollie, and I'm going to introduce to you something a little bit different for this week's episode. So a couple months ago, we did something called Growth Month, and I'll be honest, it was a huge deal for me and the team here at Autoclose. We spent a lot of time getting some of the best speakers in the world, some of the top, top names in B2B, and we wanted to ask them, look, just tell us how you do what you do. What's really clever about how you do things? Tell us the intricacies and all of the like clever tactics that you use. So I'm going to bring you the first session of a few that we're going to re-release for you. First up, and Sean's not here on this intro of me, but he is in this segment, so watch out for him. Sean hosts his good friend Agnes Lan, and she is one of our top partners here at Autoclose. She knows how to run partnerships that kick ass. And I'm kind of paraphrasing the title of the episode there in case you didn't see that. But uh, I'm not going to sell the episode too much more. This was a really good conversation between two good friends who go way back. And uh, and I know that we do a lot of business together. So learn a lot from Agnes and I'll see you at the end of the episode. So we've got Agnes with us today to talk about partnerships. Welcome to Growth Month, Agnes. Hey, happy to be here, Sean. It's it's been a while. We um we both are local here in Toronto and uh, have known each other for years. So it's great to have you as part of this event. And uh, and I know one thing you're really really good at is partnerships. So I can't wait to just jump right in. And um, before we get started, maybe just tell everyone a little bit about you. Sure. So um, I brand myself as a rookie mom because well, you can never really get parenting, right? Right to right, Sean. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> um, but my kid is 12. So I figure I'm still learning every day. So um, um, mom of my 12-year-old, but been in management consulting for the last, oh, God, I'm going to date myself, for the last 20 years. So and then I really realized that I, I love sales. So I moved into a sales specialty about, I would say, 10 years ago and haven't looked back since. Um, and the reason why I'm so keen on today's topic about growth is because during COVID, um, you know, everyone runs their, I, mean, I run a sales consultancy for a living for God's sake, right? So you, you talk about growth strategy, you talk about how to go about implementing growth strategy all the time. But it's not until COVID hit um, that I really then dug deep into my part. I mean, Sean, you know, you and I know each other forever. Like, I, I am a people person. I'm a relationship person. I'm a, like, I'm, yeah. I have partnerships all over. But I didn't really dig deep until I had to, right? So, and the result of it is we've grown a hundred percent through COVID, if not more than that this year, um, because now we're double downing on every one of our growth strategy on on partnership so and it yields dividends so whenever i have you know i give talks about partnership i'm so passionate because not only did it allow us to survive past COVID, it actually allowed us to accelerate our growth through COVID. perfect well let's let's start right there so let's define partnership maybe define and let the audience know like what is partnership how do you build that that kind of partner that you need in a business sure so from a partnership standpoint i, I think um one key element for me is there's got to be some mutually beneficial reasons for getting together okay um I, I do this talk all the time and I always say, you know what, your beer buddies that you hang out with the Thursday, Friday night, that's beer buddy talk, right? Just because you enjoy someone's company, it doesn't mean, mean that you guys are good partners. So let's start off with some mutually beneficial goals of why partnering is important. And also the idea of overlapping skill sets. If there's too much overlapping skill sets, it, it, the, the partnership becomes, you know, less dependent on each other and if there's less dependency on each other then it's hard to really hang on to the partnership if you know what i mean it takes two to tango right so definitely common goals definitely a way to bridge um the world together and and sort of complement each other's world i i like to think it's always a revenue goal it's not always a revenue goal sometimes it's a capacity um, goal. Sometimes it is a brand recognition goal, but regardless, there should be a common goal that and a reason for getting together. 
Got it. So th- this whole month, all we're talking about is growth. We want to help businesses grow. So how can we use strategic partnerships for growth? Like what are different ways that you can use that strategic partnership to help grow your business? Sure. Um, I always go back to, you know, a couple months ago, if you guys remember, well, we are Canadian. I know your audience aren't all Canadian, but in the Canadian world, um, there's a couple of actually very interesting partnerships um, in, in the space. So if you look at um, January to March, uh, t- everyone knows Timmy's. Um, Timmy ha- ran a huge partnership with Justin Bieber, right? Yep. The reason for that is because if you think about it, the, I guess, average age, <laughs> average age of coffee drinker that goes to Timmy's have increased significantly and they realize that they are not getting that those younger ones who come through. So the collaboration between Beeps and and Timmy's allows them to bring younger folks into the Tim Hortons of the world. Yep. And statistics show it was a success, right? You now have you now have kids wearing those those silly toques. <laughs> yeah. um, and they're they're selling for like a hundred dollars online or something like that. So it is it is a um, wildly successful campaign for bringing younger generations to the Tim's for coffee, right? But if you think about that, that's a short-term, one-time thing, right? And for, uh, for the Beeps, like, I was actually, funny enough, I was talking to a bunch of Americans the other day, and they're like, what? Just the Bieber is Canadian? So, so, you know, even elevating his own brand image as a Canadian as well. But if you look at also another partnership that the Beeps did uh, a while ago is a longer-term partnership with the Maple Leafs. Right. They designed the Drew House um, design the third jersey for the Leafs playoff time. So, yep. you know, going going through it, there is longer term partnership and also shorter term partnership for different reasons. Um, you know, the other other things that I, I've really enjoyed during COVID is um, there is a partnership between uh, Home Depot and uh, Instagram. So now if you look at the Home Depot, I guess if you look at all these awesome Instagram and then you look at the people that actually walk into Home Depot, you're like, there's no way there's a partnership there, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting because they must have found out something, you know, that doesn't meet the eye is the brain behind those those renovation is really the Instagram followers, <laughs> not the people that's walking through the <laughs> walking through the Home Depot. So what they ended up doing was um, where possible, where there is a, a Tim, not Tim, a, a Home Depot material that you need to buy, there's also a Home Depot link, um, and where you'll find it in which aisle. So that you know, combined with hey, 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 look at this, this is what we can get at home, right? Allow for actually significant traffic in Home Depot during COVID time because of that particular um, campaign. And interestingly enough, this this. That's all show show that IG now have more male followers. So, um, you know, those cross collaboration have been hugely successful for for those organizations. So continue to talk about, you know, partnerships and obviously uh, fueling growth. Maybe you can give the audience some examples of partnerships that are fueling growth. Like, is there other 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 partnerships that you can think of that are really helping drive that growth in the business? Sure. Um, obviously, brand you know brand collaboration is huge, right? But also, um, if you think about another type of collaboration, is capacity co- collaboration. So, if you think about organization that don't have the capacity to do some work, like we're um, uh, we're a consulting firm. So, for the longest time, I wouldn't. Um, take any subcontracts. I'm like, well, you know what? We're big enough brand to keep our own own. We don't need to subcontract. So I obviously can't say it here, but you know, we decided we're going to take some some subcontractor work during during COVID, and that account have blew up huge for us because yeah. our skill set is a different skill set than they normally bring to the table, and we're so agile that we're able to also ramp up resource as well. So it allow them to have quality work that they need. And yet at the same time, they don't need to do the dirty work, 
right? So they want to outsource stuff that they're not good at. So for for us as a consulting firm, it was a great move. It wasn't a great, and mind you, that and that's some of the things I also want to talk about today too. Is sometimes a partnership may not be what meets the eye. So when I signed the, the agreement with them back in 2020, I would never expect this amount of growth from them from this particular deal or MSA. But as you grow the relationship to be from a maybe a, a vendor to a preferred partner to like like now the top partner that they have in this space, you it, it's a as a progression of the trust that they have in you, but also a progression of the partnership responsibility and the partnership deal. So keep in mind that partnership isn't always a one time short term thing. You could grow. Um, with your partner and then both, you know, mutually benefit from a good partnership arrangement. Got it. So I know a lot of people think that partnerships is for the big guys. It's not for the small guys. Um, isn't partnership just a strategy? Like when you say it's it's for both, both big and small? Absolutely. Um, so I mean, we're small. There's only 13 of us. So it's not like we're a huge consulting firm. Um, but one of our biggest partner is actually Scotiabank. So, so they're like, well, why, right? So we specialize in sales and marketing. So naturally, we have quite a few pipe in our area. So we were able to partner with Scotia Banks of the world, and work with their reps, work with their their com, uh, commercial banking center, and work with them on a go to market strategy together to attract more people in the bank, right? And it. And because we are very good at what we do and because they are brand name, we each get what we need in this particular partnership. So and I always I always want to point out whenever I give this talk um, to small and sized business communities is everyone fears. Oh, I'm the small guy. What do I have to give? Right. And maybe it is for the big guy. Number one thing, stop thinking you have nothing to give. The fact that you're in business, you have customer, there's something you have that someone else doesn't, right? Dig deep into why you are so good at what you do. And the other thing that you need to do is to be able to articulate why you're so good at what you do. I think that's the piece that sometimes is missing for the small guys is they don't know how to articulate. They don't know how to ask. The other thing um, that's quite important is I would actually argue that point that because you're small, you need to find more partners because you have less resource than everyone else. So another way that we've been going to market with actually quite a bit more small mid-sized businesses, there's about five of us, um, five small mid-sized business entity where we get together and we host these events called the small and mighty events. So we host these summits for now, each time about 120 to 150 people pre-COVID. And we're, we're going to try to sort of get some of that back in um, now that hopefully we're at endemic. But we, because our resource, our marketing resource is limited. But if you think about it, five companies marketing resource becomes a bigger budget for us to do something with. So we host these event where we invite people to listen to like you know top end speakers about various different trending topics, pulling the community together. We even have um, on top of our summit networking event, but we, we even started uh, a business award um, event at, at the end of the year as well because the small guys, if you think about people working hard, they work harder than anyone else and they get no recognition. Yeah. So to, as a group, we got together. And we're like, you know what? They need to be recognized. They deserve to be recognized. And that was the brainchild. We're like, at the end of every year now, we have small and mighty awards and we celebrate six entrepreneurs. Um, actually, Sean, you'll be in, in. We started with GTA last year. We had two Vancouver winners. And one Halifax winner, like they're now coast to coast celebrating with us their success through and last year's theme was, you know, surviving and thriving during the pandemic. Yeah. But it's it's so encouraging to be able to pull it together. So what started as, you know what, let's pull our marketing money together so that we can have more leads to share becomes such a feel good cause for the five organization that continues to do it. Like this is our sixth year. Yeah. So, you know, are there common elements of partnership success 
and failure? Like what are those, what are those common elements that you see that can be, you know, for the good and the bad? Yep. So, um, I find a few things. Number one is common goal. I think that that whole, you know, beer buddy thing is real. Um, 87% of partnership, partnership deals or partnership arrangement, they don't work out because of that. I, I enjoy your company. I, I think you run an awesome organization. I want to partner with your organization, but there's no real end goal. So stating those real end goals or what success look like is key to any partnership. The other also is the laying out of the logistics. I think I find sometimes people think, oh, it'll just get done. Don't forget, you're working with an external organization. They're not beside you. They they are not in the same room as you. They're, they don't flag you every day. So if you don't set expectation and the logistics properly, it's going to be tough for someone to meet your expectation. So really setting up the logistics and they like, oh, you know, oh, that's too petty to do. No, because the pet, what you're, you're now, you know, air quoting as pettiness, pettiness prevents us from getting into an argument later and worse setting, you know, not meeting someone's expectation. Because in order for you to have continuous growth through partnership, you have to at least hit those small project milestones in order for us to have bigger and better deals that come through, right? So definitely um, the logistics part, people tend to forget in the expectation part um, also, and just getting all that upfront done. The other thing I've also noticed is the idea of um, the idea of share staff. So when you share the staff, make sure that they are learning also from each other. Um, because from a staff standpoint, they they want to learn, right? That, that's why they want to be on these special projects. So having too much overlap, I find sometimes there could be friction. So really put put some thought into putting that special team together and make sure that they are, the team themselves are getting something out of it aside from just, you know, uh, the com- government, uh, the the company gave me a mandate to finish this thing. Got it. So um, let's do some samples. Do you have any samples of good business to business partnerships, as well as samples of uh, business to consumer collaborations? Absolutely. So if you think about good business to business, what I always like to say is the idea of um, App Store. So one of the reasons why people love to use Apple, I'm I'm an Apple user, but Play Store is the same thing, right? The idea of a marketplace. So I'll buy, I'll sell more hardware if I have better apps, right? And in it, within the apps exchange, right, within, within the, the app store, the better apps they have, like the per, per vendor, the other more other apps comes into this marketplace. So the whole ecosystem allows for I mean, obviously you have the Android system and then the yeah. Apple system, but the whole ecosystem allows for better business transaction. Once you're in in there, how easy is it to download another app that you think is pretty good, right? So the whole business to business really, um, the, the, I, I, I love the, the, the app store, that model. Um, and then the business community model, how you can leverage off each other. B, B2C, you know, I, like I mentioned, the Home Depot and the um, IG one I thought was out of this world for COVID. But, you know, things as simple as um, Uber. Uber and um, Spotify actually has a um, customer experience uh, linkage. So um, if you upload your Spotify profile to your Uber profile, Technically, um, if you walk into an Uber, you actually hear the music that you like to hear for customer experience. So like I mentioned earlier, like sometimes when you partner, it isn't just like revenue generating, right? It is also the other like brand experience, competitive advantage. There's a bunch of reasons why people get together, but make sure that you know what that reason is. Got it. So I know the audience will probably want to hear, but like, how do you get started? Like, if you're really looking to build those partnerships, you know, you got to get your foot in the door. You got to start those relationships. What's the best way to get started? I think first things first, you have to know what you want. Like, it's hard to go out and pitch a partnership if you don't know what what partnership you need. Are you seeking a growth partner that allows you to... Uh, penetrate into a different market? Are you looking for a brand partner? Like the reason, one of the reasons I, I like partnering with Scotiabank is because, like I said, we're small. So if Scotiabank is willing to partner with us, right, in the eyes of our client, they're like, oh, there must be something there. So there, there is a brand recognition uh, partnership there. So 
understand the reason why you want a partner and where the gap might be in your world to find a partner. Then, no different than a sales pipeline, look for those partners that you want to partner with that's going to address that gap. At the same time, I want you to dig deep and go figure out what is your value proposition. Why should Scotiabank partner with you? Yep. Why should Sean, why should Vanilla Soft partner with you, right? You're going to post Sean. So why is it that they need to partner? Then go out there and articulate. Find someone that's going to listen to your pitch and see. Understand this is a sales pipeline. Right, you're not gonna pitch. You're not gonna have a hundred percent closing ratio. So the better you are at articulating your value proposition, the better you, the the chances that you're gonna close a partnership. And really, take, I would I'm gonna suggest if you're new to partnership, take baby steps. Take baby steps. Make sure that you have a smaller mandate to partner. It's easier for them to say yes, and then build on your success as a partnership as piece of uh, as a key strategic growth plan. Perfect. Well, everyone, I've got to call time on this session, but it's been a lot of fun, as always, chatting with you, Agnes. Um, so make sure you follow Agnes on or connect with her on LinkedIn. Um, bookmark the next sessions you want to hear because we have more speakers come on all month long. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again, Agnes. See ya. All right, folks, that's a wrap. Thanks very much for watching this episode. If you made it all this way through, congrats to you. I appreciate you. You know, I'd really appreciate it a little bit more, though, if you don't mind. Drop a like, drop a subscribe, and even a comment if you did really enjoy the episode. Uh, we're, we're releasing once every week, probably on a Tuesday most of the time. Uh, we stream the episodes live on LinkedIn as well. So make sure you're following kind of wherever you feel most comfortable and wherever you're going to not miss a show because we really want to make sure that the show gets as much feedback as we possibly can. So with that, like I said, like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.